As a rhinoplasty surgeon, one of the most common complaints I get is that people can't breathe through their nose. Now there's a couple different reasons for that, and in this video we're gonna go through some of those reasons and how to fix them. In general, you can really boil them down into two categories. One category is just inflammation, it's swelling. It's you have a cold, you have allergies, you have something going on, and that's usually related to your immune system, and that's something that medications work great for. So things like Flonase, Nasacort, saline rinses are your friend. If that's not working, you can also add on the oral antihistamines, Zyrtec, Allegra, Claritin, and that will help tremendously. The other category of causes for not being able to breathe through your nose is usually related to obstruction. So these are things like the turbinates, the little plane wings on the inside of your nose that help direct airflow. Those might be really swollen from allergies, or maybe the septum is super, super deviated. The septum is your cartilage that you can feel right here. And if you grab the inside of your nose, you can feel that. That's a cartilage that goes all the way back. Now that cartilage, that's the nasal septum, and that can often be deviated in people. That can cause obstruction, usually on one side, but sometimes it can be both sides if it's shaped like an S. So it kind of sticks out on one side out front, and maybe further back it sticks out to the other side or maybe the whole thing is curved off to one side like a C. There's different reasons why that happens. And if you look at literature studying how often you see this problem in people, some studies show as high as 90% of people have a nasal septal deviation. Now it's hard to really figure out what that means because not 90% of people need surgery for this. Now if it's bothering you to the extent that you can't breathe through your nose, that's when it's time to talk to a surgeon about what the issues might be and if there's a potential role for surgery and or medications. And oftentimes there's a role for both. My name is Dr. Peter Vila and I'm a facial plastic surgeon. There's basically three things you can do to treat a deviated septum. The first thing is always gonna be medications. Flonase, Nasacort, saline rinses, those are super, super helpful in just reducing the inflammation in the nose and opening up space for you to breathe. There's only a few millimeters of space for you to breathe in your nose, so even just a one millimeter improvement on both sides is gonna be huge for your nasal breathing. What people often don't understand that often comes up over and over again when I see patients for this is that they say, you know, I tried Flonase and it didn't work. And then my next question is immediately, how long were you on the Flonase for? And usually they'll say something like, well, I tried it for a few days and it just didn't work. Flonase, unlike Allegra or Claritin or Zyrtec, which are the pills, when you take a pill, when you take an Allegra, when you take a Claritin, it works right away. If you're feeling stuffy in the morning, you're sneezing a lot, it's a bad day for allergies, it's windy outside, you're gonna have allergies and you take it and you feel better immediately. Flonase and Nasacort are not like that. So these are slow acting steroid medications, not like steroids that bodybuilders use, but it's just the class of medication that it is, which means that it's kind of like birth control. So for those of you that have been on the birth control pill, you know that you don't just take it once and then expect it to work. You have to take it all month for it to work. It's the same thing with the nasal steroids. You have to be on it continuously throughout allergy season for it to work. So if you start using it today, I wouldn't expect a difference for until two weeks from now when you've been using this every day. It's a very slow acting medication. And if you miss a day here and there, if you're using it for all of spring, for example, that's okay. Just get back on it as soon as you remember and generally you'll be okay. Now, the other way to treat a deviated septum is surgery. And so there's basically two different surgeries that people do for a deviated septum. One of them is what we call an endonasal septoplasty. There's different instruments. Some people use little cameras in the nose, some people don't. It really just comes down to making an incision on the inside of the nose to remove the crooked bit of cartilage. This works super well for people with something like a septal spur, for example, which is where you have a very specific part of your nasal septum that is sticking out, and it's just that part that's sticking out, so that can be removed, and then the rest of it is relatively straight. That does not work super well when you have an entire septum that is way out here, or if you've been in a trauma, you were punched in the nose, you were in a car accident, you broke your nose, and now the base of the septum is out here. So that's not gonna fix that because the whole septum is crooked. So how do we fix that? In cases of severe septal deviation, where the entire septum is off, 
it's important to understand how we do this surgery. So going back to the nasal septum, you might hear about something called an L strut. And so an L strut means that if you look at the septum, it's kind of shaped like a credit card. It goes all the way back. You have to leave the L out front. So this L here that sits on the nose, both providing the contour on top and a support down low. So it looks like an L like this. You have to leave enough septum in that L strut. Otherwise the nose will collapse over time. So you can remove everything else back here. Okay. Further back. And that's what we often use for rhinoplasty is that cartilage. When we harvest cartilage to make changes in the nose, that's what we're using. However, if there's a deviation in that L strut itself, no little endonasal septoplasty is going to fix that because you have to fix the L strut. So now sometimes you have to open up the nose. And so that's the third option for a severe septal deviation. That's what I would call an open septoplasty where we make a little incision here, lift everything up and sometimes remove the entire septum to replace it straight. And that is a much more involved surgery that's usually done by facial plastic surgeons. That, that is the only way to fix a severe septal deviation. Anything less than that is not going to get you the result that you're looking for. So if you choose not to do anything, is a deviated septum going to get better on its own? Not really. Medications will definitely help, but they're not going to move architecture, right? They can't move a structure in your body. So if you do nothing, it's probably just going to stay that way for the rest of your life. Now this is still elective surgery. You don't have to have this fixed. This is not a life-saving surgery that's going to add years to your life. It's more of a quality of life surgery where you might be happier and might breathe better through your nose, which will allow you to work out or just be outside without constantly thinking about it. I often have people tell me too that it comes up when they're sleeping at night where one side gets stuffy. Now it's really important to understand that fixed obstruction, meaning the same side of your nose is always blocked. That is usually a sign of a septal deviation versus an alternating obstruction where you have one side and then the other side and then the other side. Now, if you've noticed and you've noticed that in your own nose, that's what's called the nasal cycle. And that's normal. That's what these little plane wings on the inside of your nose are doing. They sometimes swell up and they'll shrink on one side, swell up on the other, and then they shrink and swell up on the other side. And they're, they're kind of alternating like that. And that's much more a sign of turbinate hypertrophy or meaning large turbinates where that's the problem. It's not so much the septum that's the issue because the septum's not moving back and forth, right? The septum's just sitting there in, in one place. So a fixed obstruction is usually much more of a sign of a surgical cause or, or something that would benefit from surgery. So of course, a common question that comes up is, is this covered by insurance? Yes, a septoplasty and a turbinate reduction are covered by insurance. So I brought up a turbinate reduction a couple times. What does that mean? On the inside of our nose, we have little plane wings called turbinates. We actually have three of them, the inferior, the middle, and the superior. The inferior is the one we care about, the biggest one on the bottom. Now that inferior turbinate, it can swell up in response to allergens and things like that. Now medications will shrink it up, but it's a really nice maneuver too when we're in there surgically to actually shrink those down. And so 20 years ago, surgeons used to just remove the inferior turbinate. The problem with doing that is that even though you do create a lot of space in the nose, now people can't feel the airflow in their nose and they get something called empty nose syndrome, which is where they feel like their nose is blocked even though they're moving air. The reason that happens is because those, the lining of the turbinates provide sensation. So when you can't feel the lining, when you can't feel the airflow in your nose, that's really distressing to people and we think that's the cause of empty nose syndrome. Nowadays, we do not remove the inferior turbinate. Instead, what we do is we sort of just reduce the size of the turbinates. And there's different ways of doing this, different technology out there, but all of them basically involve scarring the inside of those turbinates so that they just shrink down. The lining is left there so that you still have feeling on the inside of your nose and you can feel the air moving through your nose. Now, should you run to your surgeon because someone told you that you have a deviated septum? No, you absolutely should not. And this is why. The only time that you should have surgery for your deviated septum is if it's causing you difficulty breathing through your nose. The only time that you should have surgery for your deviated septum is if it's causing you difficulty breathing through your nose. Just because someone looked in your nose and told you that, yeah, your septum, septum's a little bit deviated, that doesn't matter. If you're breathing through your nose just fine to a level that's satisfactory to you, don't worry about it. Just because it's a little bit off, doesn't mean anything unless it's causing you difficulty breathing. A lot of people have a deviated septum and I would not recommend getting it fixed just to get it fixed. 
Now, is age important for deviated septum surgery? Not really, although you do tend to see this in younger people. If you tend to make it past age 50, those patients have had this their whole lives. So, you know, they've been living this way for this long. What made them change their minds later on to actually have this surgery? Usually, it's younger patients either with exercise or sleep and they're unable to breathe through their nose and so the surgery helps them with that. Now one thing that can come up is with snoring and sometimes people ask if fixing the deviated septum will help their snoring. So the answer is it's not necessarily going to fix the snoring. It might help, but snoring is caused by the structures in the back of your throat. So it's sort of due to muscle tone and the size of our neck and really further down instead of just the nose. So if people are constantly breathing through their mouth, if they breathe through their nose, they might not snore, but it's definitely no guarantee, and I would not promise anybody who's getting a septoplasty that they're going to stop snoring. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope you learned something today about your nasal septum, something that maybe you didn't know about your nose before. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment on the post, and I will see you on the next video.